Hey, what's going on guys? Today's video is gonna be a little different. I'm gonna be going over some new changes that the Chimera update brought and a whole bunch of little things that I haven't talked about yet or that I think you might find useful for Eidolons. So this is gonna be a video with like some advanced tips as well as just going over what changed for the Chimera update because post Chimera Eidolons are different than the Eidolons before them. And I'm posting this before Fortuna so I hope to God they're not gonna break it again in the Fortuna update. But let's get started with some of the main changes after Chimera. What seems to have happened is they updated the in-game physics and that broke a lot of the little techniques that people were using. And it's not necessarily that those have gone away, it's just that those techniques have changed post Chimera, just because of the little changes that DE made to the game. The main post Chimera changes are that lures now tend to float away, wisps are harder to spawn, quick charging is different, and bombless spawn less in addition to them having a guaranteed spawn under the Eidolon during the last phase. I'm not sure whether or not they had a guaranteed spawn before, but now it's very important that you grab the Vonvolus to spawn directly underneath the Eidolon. And I'll show when that happens and when you should be getting them. A lot of these techniques are from more advanced Eidolon hunts where you're doing like four or five, six by threes. But hopefully you'll be able to incorporate at least some of these into your runs, even if you're not doing many multiples of runs every night. And if you're doing a six by three, I'm not sure why you're watching this video. But let's get started with the new quick charge technique. The new quick charge is pretty simple. Chroma just grabs the first lure, but instead of grabbing the one by the small lake to the left, we're now grabbing the one from the small camp across the big lake here. As soon as the other players in the squad see the yellow defense icon, they then dash to the log in the middle. This will force Vonvolus to spawn in this big area here. And from my experience, this technique works almost 100% of the time on PC. But if you're playing on console, this could be different. I'm not sure if there's a technique on console that works. But by doing this, you're going to force the Vonvolus to spawn and allow the Chroma to quick charge the first lure, which if you're trying to go quickly, is very, very important for a quick run. Although this technique does rely on you having an organized group. If not everybody's dashing at the same time, it's not going to work. But if you are organized, it's very reliable. Which brings me to the next thing, and that's that lures tend to float around a lot more now. This makes it a lot harder to control their positioning, especially after you teleport them, which can lead to them dropping shards in midair or other little annoyances that'll slow down your run. The only guaranteed way I know how to combat this is to give the lures time to settle out on their own. They're just a lot more annoying to deal with now, and it's just good to be aware of the fact that they take more maintenance. In this same line, less Vomblas are spawning now during the Eidolon fights. To combat this in our fast runs, we've only been grabbing three lures for the Terrorist, and then the last five for the Gantilus and the Hydralist. So Chroma grabs the first lure, Trinity helps on the first two shields to get him down faster, then grabs the next two lures, one lure to ensure the Terrorless capture, and one lure to ensure that the Gantilus doesn't start teleporting around when you start fighting it. After Trinity brings the next two lures back to the Terrorless though, she should have time to help the last shield, assuming you got the lures fast enough. It's also during this time that you can hold the lures for the Chroma player. So for the Terrorless, the Chroma should have all three lures by the end of it. This will then give the Trinity player time to grab the remaining five lures, and if you're able to grab all five just as the Terrorless goes down, or just afterwards, you can then bring those five lures to the Terrorless in hopes of grabbing extra Vomblis that are left over after the Terrorless. But it's very important that you make sure that all three lures that Chroma has are charged, because if they're not, you could be stealing Vomblis away from the Chroma and end up without a charged lure for the Gantilist. Now the question is, how do we get Vomblis since they're not spawning very often during the Eidolon fights anymore? And the way we do it is that after you've broken all the limbs and the Eidolon goes down for the final time, he's going to spawn what seems to be about three Vomblis when he goes down and when he stands back up. It's during this time you can charge your remaining five lures. You just need to be diligent about void dashing or shooting at what essentially is the Eidolon's crotch every time he goes down. It's very important you're on top of the Vomblis spawns if you're going quickly because they just don't spawn enough anymore. The Unaru Wisp spawns were also changed during the update because it seems like the Eidolons now have a higher hitbox, so you're going to need to be higher up with your operator in order to actually damage the Eidolons with your Void Blast, thus creating an Unaru Wisp. The two main techniques I know to guarantee a Wisp spawn now are standing on his left leg, or dashing up in the air with your operator and Void Blasting it on the way down. These seem to be the most consistent, and the dashing up in the air and Void Blasting also seems to work when the Eidolons first spawning out of the lake, but it's generally just something to be aware of while you're doing Eidolons. Next, let's go over some advanced tips for doing Eidolons. And I want to start out with something that I personally struggle with, and that's proccing Virtuous Shadow. Virtuous Shadow is an arcane fear amp similar to Virtuous Fury, which if you watched my operator guide, you'll remember that I recommended running Virtuous Fury for Eidolons. But if you're running Eidolons at a high level, proccing Virtuous Shadow is going to be really, really important. And that's because you can proc it without expending Void Strike stacks. But before we go into how to proc it, let's talk about what Virtuous Shadow does for you, and the reason why it's the best DPS arcane for Eidolons. Virtuous Shadow gives your operators a 60% crit chance buff with a 40% proc rate on headshots. 
Now you might ask how we're going to get headshots without expending our Void Strike stacks. And it's simple, all we do is dash to the Eidolon's head. And I'll show that in a second. But because with our DPS amps we're using the Shrax on Scaffold with a low rim brace for extra crit chance, our base crit chance with our alt fire is 32%. And remember the alt fire has two individual components. The initial shot as well as the explosion. Which means that each of those shots is going to have a 51.2% crit chance while we have the Virtuous Shadow buff up. And because each of these two components have a 51% crit chance, we have a roughly 76% chance to proc at least one of them. And if you're doing Eidolons quickly, you're only going to need one of these to crit, because you and the other three Matarai players should be firing at once. And you're going to be getting an extra 100% damage from the Unara Wisp, as well as doubling any crits you deal with the Volt Shields, which is the important part of the Virtuous Shadow Arcane. Because the Volt Shields double your Operator crits, getting more crits will increase your Eidolon DPS versus having someone like Virtuous Fury that only increases your damage by 30%. Shadow allows us to make full use of Volt Shields, and that's the important part of it. And Shadow is really the min-max arcane for the fast Eidolons. If you're doing Eidolons in a less organized or slower group, Fury is just fine. And it's so much easier to proc than Shadow, which you'll see in a second. So procking Virtuous Shadow in the Eidolons is accomplished through two main methods. The first method is dashing at the Eidolon's head. You can proc Virtuous Shadow by dashing in between the Eidolon's head and its little chin area. Where they have these little, like, beard-looking things. I'm not really sure what they are. But if you dash just right, you can kind of lock your operator in that area. And typically when setting up the dash, I try to line myself up with the Eidolon and aim just under the head with my reticle when void dashing. And there are two main windows to accomplish this. It's when the Eidolon dips its head for the first time during the energy spike, and then again when it dips its head as soon as it's about to stand up. If you're able to proc Virtuous Shadow during either of these times, you're going to have enough time on the crit buff for at least one shot against the Eidolon. Although obviously if you proc it during the second time he dips his head, it's going to give you more time with the buff in case you need more time. And when you hit an enemy with Void Dash, it's going to restore 10 energy. So as long as you're locked in with the Eidolon, you're going to be able to restore your energy while you're Void Dashing at the head. Which just lets you Void Dash more, considering the dash itself actually costs 25 energy. So you'll eventually run out of energy, but it's going to take longer while you're dashing into the Eidolon. I will say that I'm definitely not the best at this, and if you watch any of the Twitch streams, you'll know for a fact that I am not great at this. I'm able to get it up a respectable amount of time using the head dash, but it's just not consistent enough for me. I much prefer to use the more confusing, but more consistent ground dashing. The principle behind ground dashing is that when the Eidolon dips his head down, you can dash at the ground, and the hitbox from the Eidolon's head will overlap with your Void Dash, meaning that you can proc Virtuous Shadow by dashing at the ground when the Eidolon dips its head down. However, this only works on places where there's like a slope or an incline, so it's harder to proc on the Terrorless considering it usually spawns on flatter ground. But the other two Eidolons spawn around the lake, and there are three different locations around the lake that make ground dashing very easy. The two front spawns just by the shrine, as well as the one halfway down the lake right here. If the Eidolon spawns at the very far spawn, it's much less likely that you're going to get a ground proc off. Just because the Eidolon's head doesn't dip down far enough. So at that spawn you would need to resort to dashing into the Eidolon's head like I showed before. And when you're ground proccing, you just need to make sure you're lining your dash up with the Eidolon's head and then I look down and spam the spacebar button. I'll do this until I see the Virtuous Shadow buff on the top right hand corner. At which point I know I'm good to go pick up an Inara Wisp and get ready to shoot the Eidolon. If I'm able to do it, I really prefer ground proccing for the Virtuous Shadow buff. It's much more consistent and easier to manage. But both of these methods take a good amount of practice, and that's part of the reason why I didn't make this video yet, because I wasn't confident enough in my own abilities to be able to tell you guys how to do it. And while I definitely wouldn't call myself an expert at this, I've gotten to the point where I can pretty comfortably do a 5x3 with this method, even if I don't have the proc up 100% of the time. But by using one or either of these methods, I'm able to keep it up for most of the Eidolon shields. And on a similar note about shield DPS, I've heard that shooting behind the Eidolon's leg up through to the knee will increase your overall DPS, but this does require you to have Volt Shields there, and I'm not entirely sure how much better this method actually is. But I know there are players better than me doing 6 by 3s that use this method for Eidolon Shield DPS, so I figured I would at least mention it here. And then the last couple tricks I want to go over are Volt Pre-Shielding. So there are only four Eidolon spawns around the lake, right? So you can pre-shield with Volt if you're fast enough in between Eidolons for one shield per spawn location. This means that no matter where the next Eidolon spawns, there's going to be shields already down for you and your team, which is just a little trick to increase your overall Eidolon speed. And then finally, if you pick up a shard while you're in operator mode, you're going to be able to place it into the shrine in operator mode. This means that you can continue to charge your Void Strike while you're picking up the shards at the shrine. However, if you transfer back into your Warframe, you're going to have to put it in with your Warframe. You can't transfer back into Operator and put it in with Operator. But that's the last little trick that I have for this video. If there are any other tricks that I missed here, please leave a comment below. 
and I'll try to cover them in a future video. But right now I just wanted to cover all the stuff that I had missed in my previous videos and talk about what changes came in that Chimera update. But for the next few days I'm going to be streaming Fortuna basically non-stop so I hope you guys come by and check that out. Or maybe you're going to be playing the new update yourself which I'm hoping you're all looking forward to. But that's going to do it for me today guys. If you found this video helpful I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for future content like this. Hope you're all having a good one and I'll see you later.